Yeah. Okay, so let's get started because you have a demo for us today. I do. I Not do. Just chit chat. Well, yes. And if we, those of you who are regulars, you, this kind of harkens back to our stop the insanity. Why well, keep buying a new pattern just to get a certain aspect? And then we all know that um, unless you're, you've gotten your sloper, which we've been teaching for a while now and created a sloper so that you know if the pattern's going to fit or not, you're reinventing the wheel every time you get a new pattern because then you've got to correct the fit as well as just to get this one new aspect, which might be a sleeve or a hemline, or in this case, a neckline. So we were showing you last time about changing up the new pattern, the artisan tee, to get more coverage in the front or to get a longer or more dramatic hemline. It has a pretty dramatic hemline as it is, but you can even go further. So we showed you this piece back here um, that we did. Uh, making those changes and everything. But the one thing uh, we didn't talk about last time was that we did change the neckline. And so you'll see it right here. It's a very smooth neckline and it's faced with a knit as opposed to having the little trim along the edge. So let me show you what I mean. You want me to turn it around now? Yeah. We're moving. All right, so this is um, the V-neck version uh, of the Artisan T. And of course you could take this neckline and put it on any t-shirt, you put it on your sloper even. But this is a very sporty look in my opinion and I think you'd agree. And then this is view A of the Artisan T and it has the band. And again, I think it's a little sporty. And sometimes in a knit, there's lots of knits, you can make a very, very dressy look. But I think without the band, it's a better look. So over here, we have a couple of examples, again, of that really smooth neckline. And it does have just one row of fine top stitching. And I'll get that off and show it up closer in a minute, Jess. Okay. All right. So... This is done all very similar to when we put the little binding on. So we're going, oh, sorry. <laughs> hello, <laughs> am I upside down? Um, all right, we ready? Yeah. Okay. I don't know, I think so. Yeah. So remember when we do a band on a neckline and we can make this neckline any shape we want. We don't have to use the one, this pink one I just showed you is from the exact neckline of view a in the pattern guide but the one that we did um in the modifications and what i'm showing you here is one that we just uh drew we just made the neckline a little bit different so um you're going to do the same thing uh that you do when you make a neckband for a new neckline and that is you're going to measure the stitching line of the neckline and then you're going to multiply that times 0.89. Now, all this information I've given many times, you'll find it in, I believe you can find it in the sloper, knit sloper guide, but you can also find it in the five easy T's and you can find it um, in the newsletter about necklines. So anyway, but if you have any trouble, let me know. So you're going to measure that neckline. Then you're going to uh, multiply it times 0.89. And that's the length of your binding, not your neckband, but your binding. But it is cut similar. The one difference is, is we're not going to use the fabric that we made our T out of. We're going to use something that we, uh, a lightweight, very lightweight knit. But you want it to really be stretchy. See that? This we figured was about a 75. 
uh, percent stretch. So you know how we did that uh, measurement? You'll find how to do that in the knit sloper uh, on the playlist on YouTube. So if you look up that knit, knit fit series, you'll find out how to measure your knit to see how much it stretches. But you want about a 75% because you want a really soft because it's just going to lay inside the neck. And you're going to prepare it just like you do um, the neck band by pressing it in half. But we're going to cut this one and a quarter inches wide. And this is important. And then fold it in half, which will make it a five eighths inch. Then we're going to stitch it at a quarter of an inch when we stitch it on. Okay, so that's a little bit different. Now we're going to quarter it just like we do with the neckband when we put it on the neckline. And you're going to stitch it right to the neckline, just as if you were going to put a neck uh, band on. But then you fold it over and press it to the wrong side, and then you top stitch on the folded edge. And it'll lay nice and flat. Now, we went through some tests, and I, if you are not completely sure of this process and you're about to make a new shirt, why not do what we did and cut out just the top, just the top of the pattern so that you can do a test. Shall I lay it down? Just wherever you put it, just do it. Okay. <laughs> so what I've done, as you can see, it's just a few inches below the neckline the front and the back and stitch them together so that you can do your test because we did a test um, and we found that we had to correct it. So on this one, this was our first one, we cut it at the one and a half width. And what happened is it ended up being a lot wider than the other one. But, well, a lot wider, a little wider, but just enough wider to make it too thick and to make it want to want to peel out. And if we made it another quarter of an inch wider, it would really want to tip out. Even though we have adjusted it and we've quartered it and shrunk it in, it's a very soft knit, so it's not going to pull in like a band does. So... The one and a quarter, starting with the one and a quarter, we learned was the better process. And that's what you learn by doing a couple of little tests. And you got some scrap fabric when you get your garment cut out. And if you want to try something for the first time, don't frustrate yourself. Because on here, if it doesn't work out, we can throw this away. Or we don't worry about being so picky about uh, pulling out the stitches and things is driving us crazy when we're doing a real garment so do a sample ahead of time and i just think this neckline is great when you don't want the sporty look or you just want a clean smooth look especially if you're going to wear a little jewelry with it it's just uh i think a little bit nicer look i think i got everything in there again we went with a 75 percent stretch i'd go with at least a 50. something soft and i found that i had this big chunk of this neutral and I put it in the blue one as well that blue one has the same color that navy blue because it's not going to show because we're always going to remember to press it down so that we are favoring the the fashion fabric to the wrong side so you're never going to see our beige or taupe colored binding on the right side so even in that navy blue, you never know. Um, so the color is not as important as the stretchability and really lightweight. Okay. Yeah. And for this neckline, all we did was we took the 5 Easy T neckline and I just brought it up a, an inch or two uh, for a different look. It's a different type of garment. So, um that's all you have to do, but you can change those necklines on any garment um, without having to go out and purchase a new one and refit it. Once you've got a good fit, think about how you can change the different or add to or subtract pockets, um, yokes, collars, sleeves, 
all of that. Patty wants to know, did you tap stitch it? I did. Uh, well, when you stitch on that very edge, you are top stitching. So when we stitch here, it is on the outside. So again, there is some stitching on the right side. But it is um, not as obvious as it is with a band. But I like it a lot. This one is this particular one is going to be a, a nightgown, and I bought more fabric than I needed by accident, so I had plenty to make a sample. But you remember, I think it was about two years ago when we did Stop the Insanity, and I took the five easy tees, and I made um, a nightgown and a dress, as well as a uh, swing t-shirt out of that exact same pattern, just to show that you can make all those changes. So that's what I did here, as I used that five easy tees. And Jan just wants clarification with that 0.89, are you multiplying or dividing? You're, you're multiplying the distance of your uh, neckline. So I think ours was like 25 and a half and we multiplied times 0.89. And then we took that number and added the seam allowance. And that's how long we cut our knit. And remember, you're going to quarter it, so you're easing it in a little bit in each one of those quarters. And again, that demonstration can be found in the playlist on the 5 Easy Tees um, uh, sew along. So if you've not done that before and you're not sure what I'm saying when I say quarter it, go ahead, take a look at that where we're putting the neckband on and, and then you'll see. And Joni's asking, is that a regular straight stitch and it wouldn't pop or break? Yes, it is a regular straight stitch and no, it won't pop or break. And let me um, tell you a little secret. The stretch stitches that they put on your sewing machine, your home sewing machine, is not something that's ever used in regular garment construction. This is something they made up for the home sewing world. It's not necessary. If you know how to sew on knits, your threads aren't going to pop. If you are making something that is an athletic wear that has to stretch completely like uh, um, a leotard or swimwear or leggings, then you want to use the Eloflex thread, which also stretches. And again, you can do straight stitch. Otherwise, for seams, we're doing serger, which we know stretches. But for, for those of us who are in the age group that I'm in, we remember stretch and sew. So this lovely lady named Ann Person brought the industry method of sewing knits to us back in the 60s. And back then, we only had cotton knits, if I remember correctly. But Ann created this line of cotton knits with ribbing to match and these wonderful patterns. And she would teach all of us how to sew with knits. And there was almost no pins. The only time you used pins was when you quartered that neckband. So if you ever get a chance to look at one of Ann Person's uh, books, I know they're out of print, but you can usually find them, uh, find one. Um, you'll see all of that information about um, sewing on knits. But one of the things Ann taught us was is as you're putting that band on, anytime you're doing a straight stitch, you let the knit stretch slightly, just slightly, as you're sewing it. And then when it's put on and it's pulled a little bit, the stitches aren't going to pop. But again, if you're going to have something that's going to pull a lot, you want a stretch thread. But I would never use a stretch stitch on a home sewing machine. I think they're clumsy. It's harder to get a nice clean uh, seam because it's usually going back and forth or forward and back. So the whole thing's jerking. That's not a good way to get a nice uh, clean seam allowance. 
So I hope that answered your question. It probably gave you more than you were looking for. <laughs>